I'm Crystal, and I send your greetings on behalf of the ELCA's Global Mission Unit. I'm super excited to be here with you today. I love Texas. I'm from the north, so I'm really liking the hot weather. It's really great. <laughs> Um, on August 3rd of this year, I returned to the United States after living and serving for one year in Argentina, South America, through a program called Young Adults in Global Mission, which is through the ELCA. So I spent my year in the southern part of Argentina in a city called Bariloche. Um, I spent my days at an art school for adults with special needs, and then also at the Lutheran Church doing various things with their music groups and other ministries. So I'm in this country and I'm living there and I'm serving there for one year in these, in these placements. And one day I was reflecting on how difficult it was to make friends in, in a place that was not my own, in a place where I was seen as an outsider. Um, and that, that day I, I ended up sitting next to a young man named Diego on um, this city bus in Bariloche. And he told me, Bariloche is beautiful and breathtaking and fantastic, and it really is. If you've ever been there it's, or seen pictures, it's this gorgeous display of nature. But he told me that, on the other hand, he thinks that Bariloche is such a lonely city. And for him, it just, it was not this place that he would call home because it's a tourist-centered city. All these people come from all over to travel, and he said there nobody stays. They're all just passing through. So everybody here is kind of just left lonely. So I started thinking about how the loneliness of living in not only a tourist-centered city, but a city that isn't necessarily a place that I've lived my whole life, um, has affected my relationships. I found that I, I didn't want to put forth effort to getting to know people who were just here for a day, a week, a month. And me, personally, I'm just passing through, um, knowing that I would return t to the U.S. in August of 2011. Um, so in the text that I chose for today, God speaks <clears throat> through the prophet Jeremiah and tells Jeremiah to write a letter to the people who have been called into exile. These people were basically uprooted from their homeland and placed in a foreign country or a foreign land. Um, they were sent to an area of the world where there was already this existing culture, this existing community of people. And so here they are as a group of outsiders coming in and, and sent there. And, and then when they arrive, um, they receive this letter from Jeremiah, which in the letter, um, God explains that he would bring them back that God would bring these people back to their original land in 70 years. So as I read this, the introduction to the letter, I thought, wow, how reluctant would I be to become attached or get too attached to the place, to the people, um, and, and just the idea of living in Babylon, a place that, you know, wasn't my own, is, is not my own. Um, so... 70 years is quite a bit of time, but it's still knowing that in a set period of time you'll be uprooted and you'll be placed back to where you, back where you came from. Yet God speaks through the prophet Jeremiah and says this in the text for today, Jeremiah 29. To all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. And when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I will gather you from all of the nations and places where I have banished you. And I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So it struck me as odd that God would send this message to these people who are living in this place for just a short period of time to settle down to build houses, to plant gardens, to form deep and lasting relationships with the Babylonians. All activities that require a lot of time and energy 
and attention. God was calling the people to grow and to love and to continue living, regardless of the fact that they're sent to this place only to return where they started years later. God was calling them to become attached, to live among the Babylonians in relationship with them and the culture of these people, and to trust that this process would bring them prosperity and direction in their lives. I then thought of my own situation, feeling alone in this foreign country, struggling with the language and feeling the temptation to not form deep and lasting relationships because I was only going to be passing through. The text from Jeremiah helped me to remember my original intentions for, for applying to the Yegum program. I had wanted an experience to live in a different part of the world, not just to visit someplace new or to travel to a foreign land with other United States citizens, but I wanted the opportunity to live among and alongside people and cultures and ways of life were, that were vastly different from anything that I had ever experienced. This is what I had wanted, and this is what I felt God was calling me to, and here I was wish granted, in the situation, and yet I was holding back. Well, I've returned to the United States now, and there are some moments that I really do miss the community in Bariloche so much. I have met, I met so many people and so many families that loved me and took care of me, um, that invited me into their homes and and allowed me to walk alongside them in their journey and their tasks of daily life and also inviting me to their birthday parties, things like that. And so why spend time with them? Why did I get so close to people that I know would not be coming back to the U.S. with me? Why would I put all of that energy knowing that I would be uprooted? Well, God has called me back to the United States and as I've been getting used to the meal schedule, the type of food, um, speaking in English again, I'm starting to see why God called me to such an experience. The entire process of my Yegem year has given me direction in terms of vocation. It has given me different lenses to see issues like poverty and racism and oppression and other injustices. It has given me the lenses to see the connectedness that lies between our culture and other cultures in the world. It's given me lenses to see God at work through the culture of each place. It's given me lenses to see new depths to the concepts of grace and sharing and humility. I truly learned so much and I am so thankful that I planted gardens, that I built houses while I was there. Not literally, but definitely in relationships. Nurturing those relationships and seeing them grow. And being back here, not quite knowing where I'm going next, um, this text kind of puts me at ease to know that, to know that God has a plan for me. As God says, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. And so today, I'm not sure where you are all at, if this is your first time at Texas Lutheran University, if this is your first year. Maybe you've been here for years, but it's a new group and it feels totally different. Each one of us are at different pl places in our discernment and in our journey of life. And today I stand before you and invite you to imagine yourself in the world, God's world. And if you feel the temptation to not, to not put energy into relationships because maybe at the end of this year you'll be leaving Texas Lutheran to do something else or maybe you'll be changing programs or maybe changing schools or maybe not sure what you're going to do, that you do plant those gardens, that you do build those houses that you love and that you allow God to work because you I believe definitely that you'll see the direction and the ways that God uses those experiences to transform and to shape you. Um, please pray with me. Lord, thank you for bringing each one of us to the places where we have been into this place now. 
We come from so many places, and from today on, we may go to so many different places in your world. Help us to see that you are present in the world wherever we go, and help us to hear your voice to wherever you are calling us to go. Please be with us today. In your name we pray. Amen.